that's it. So, um, Mike, I'm going to record this, if that's all right. Yes, India, I just saw the note. Absolutely. Good man. Great stuff. Yeah. How's it? How's it going then? All the preparations. This, you, you've got a much better picture there, by the way. Yeah, good. Yeah, I shut down a few things like Outlook. <laughs> uh, it well, the 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 advantage of rolling the dice when we did in February this year um, and really looking each other in the eye as much as we could in Zoom and uh, on conference calls and said, do we really think that we can invite people now to show up in person, 500 people in a hotel room with the average age is 65 and play harmonica for five or six days in groups of 100 um, or shall we try and do something even better than we did last year because we got three more months to do it <laughs> and so we said you know as much as we'd like to believe we're going to be at 70 percent and all this is going to be behind us by august something you know serendipity and chaos are not in our favor and i think every day that's gone by you know i talked to uh i got phone calls from a number of friends after we made the decision to go virtual again this year and said um that um, they really appreciate the fact that we did it. They didn't want to invite people, you know, Joe Felisco, you know, starting in April and saying, are you ready to commit to coming down here and, and you know, booking flights and all that stuff. And um, so, it, you know, last year we started in the middle of May and we had to unravel a live convention and negotiate our way out of that, which was fine, and, and then plan this one. And so this year we had three more months and we also had some experience as well as our shared experience with yourselves and Richard and others who put on events after we did last summer. Um, and so right. we were able to weave in things like you call it the bar, we call it the lounge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess that every time there's a, there's an, an online harmonica convention, since all the main people go to all of it, the bar just raises. Sorry, I'm using the word bar again. It yeah, keeps, yeah, yeah. It keeps yeah. raising, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. And the good news is, you know, a year ago, you, you were lucky if you could buy a camera. I mean, I still have the one I bought last year sitting up here. I'm not using it right now. And right. it's an off brand, not very good one. And if I was to switch to it, you'd be able to tell. Last right. year, I had my normal backdrop behind me with stuff and this year we've got banners all of our mcs are going to have these by yeah. the way nice um this these you can only get next year if there's any left um or uh we're going to sell some more goodie bags during the event but um and we'll talk more about goodie bags but uh so we this year we've got 60 hours plus of content We've got two seminar tracks plus a vendor and teaching track. So three rooms going in the afternoons parallel. And then two founder stage performances, which has typically been our sort of smaller performance space, you know, sort of on the afternoons. And we've had some wonderful ones there with people like Rob Paparozzi and others. Um, and we're going to feature a, a session on Billy Bar Arnold. And we're also going to have six of our oh. uh, scholars. Um, who sadly for the second year are unable to come, but we've got an amazing one hour show from all over the world. Five of them are from outside the US performing um, just an incredible breadth from nine years old to 21 years old. It's gonna put a smile on everybody's face to see the talking talent. Of, talking of age, what uh, Billy Boy Arnold is still with us, I think, isn't he? He is still with us. We were hoping at some point that he would be able to play and, and Eric Noden who lives in and near Chicago and Joe and Kim Field were gonna put on uh, Billy Boy and, and put on a, a show with him playing. His health needs to be his focus right now. So what we're going yeah. to be doing is Billy Boy Arnold, the man and his music. Okay. And so Kim Field, who has been writing this book with Billy Boy together with Eric and Joe Felisco, are oh. gonna, do a, gonna spend an hour and some talking about his music, playing his music and talking about his life. Okay. And um, so a, a wonderful substitute, but not. <laughs> you might perhaps enlighten the folks here if they don't know. How did he get his his boy name? You know, I you're going to have to tell me, Ben, if you know the answer to that, because I'm I have to say I'm 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 not the best one to answer that question. 
Well, what I read was that he was taking harmonica lessons with Sonny Boy One. Okay, that makes sense. That that was kind of my guess, but I wasn't sure. I didn't want to start a rumor. So this is so this guy is direct legacy yeah. to Sonny Boy One, yes. who was really one of the most influential harmonica players of of all times in a kind of understated way, wasn't he? Because he was the one who put the harmonica to the front of the band and made it a solo, in, a proper instrument, if you like, in the blues setup. For the diatonic, yes, absolutely. For the diatonic, yes. Yeah, yeah. And Billy Boy, I think, is in his early to mid 80s now. Yes. Um, and, and is still playing, but um, like I say, the focus had to be on his health. And so we sadly had to uh, change, but I think it'll be a really interesting. Kim has spent a lot of time with him you know, writing this book that's coming out later on this year, and I'm sure he'll talk about it. And I know, you know Eric and, and Billy Boy have played together, and, and Eric has a wonderful, um, my, my wife and I, him and her, our, our trio had an opportunity to play with Eric and Joe in one of their afternoon sessions a few months ago, and they've got a really nice setup and studio arrangement, and so that's where they're gonna do it in Chicago. Oh, that's great. I think the first album, first harmonica album I think I ever bought was Billy Boy Arnold and Johnny, Johnny Jones wow. playing playing live at the Fickle Pickle in Chicago in 1962 or something. Yeah, and it's it's still available if you can find it. Billy Boy Arnold and Johnny Jones, if you can find that album, it's a cracking album and you can really feel the atmosphere. Both of them are singing and Johnny Jones is on piano and Billy Boy's on the harmonica and both singing and you can you can really feel the atmosphere. There weren't that many people in the room because you can hear the clapping. It's you know it's about nine people in the room, I'm guessing, and it's just a beautiful, really raw, beautiful album. Is that on vinyl, Ben, or the CD? Well, I got it on vinyl. I, I expect yeah. it's on CD and Spotify and Shopify and <laughs> anything else if I. Yeah. Anywhere where musicians oh. don't make any money anymore. Yeah, right. That's right. <laughs> And what's that Mary Beth has got there? I've been I've been wanting to get this and I got it last um, month on eBay. I had, uh, actually I got through Hale Letter and I've been wanting this for a long, long time and I just got it in the mail. Okay. It's, it's, and what is it? Is it a tutorial or something or it says DVD. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. It oh. should be pretty good. It says, A Guide to the Classic Amplified Harp Sounds of John Lee Williamson, Little Walter, Sonny Boy Williamson, and Billy Boy himself, featuring Billy Boy Arnold. Fantastic. Fantastic. Excellent. And then Zoe's put in the link in the chat thing. So that's the that's the the album, is it? Or is it a DVD? No, I don't know. That's the CD. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I can put on the, the link for the album, too, if you like. Great stuff. It's worth a look, I think. It's just, you know, real genuine, authentic, old-style playing, and it all works. Very, very nice. Anyway, sorry, I interrupted you, Michael. Sorry. Yeah, that's all right. I'm just I'm just typing in the rest of our addresses while everybody's doing that to make sure yeah. everybody knows how to find Spa and, on Facebook and on our, on our website. Um, so 60 hours plus of content from we're doing everything in US Central Time just so I can at least make it makes it easy for me because that's where we are um, starting at right between noon and one o'clock our time. So about six, you know, the sun is almost over the yard arm in 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 the UK and um, going till about 10 o'clock at night or four in the morning. Um, we've got a blues blow off again this year, which is something that many people, including um, this year's host, Mark Hummel, have run over the years as an independent sort of Tuesday night event at Spa while we're setting up and getting everything ready and getting the soundstage. Um, Christopher Richards did it for a number of years. Jason Ricci has done it for a number of years. Um, last year, Christopher asked to withdraw and we were going to host it. And, and, and obviously that didn't happen this year. We've made a uh, a concerted effort to do it, and that, that that will be a live show. And I don't know how often that's happening, um, but Mark Hummel, Aki Kumar, Nick Clark, Gary Smith, and Andy Santana 
plus Rusty Zinn, Bob Welsh, and for those who don't know him, June Kaur, who plays with Charlie Musselwhite and is one of the best damn drummers I've ever seen. <laughs> okay. um, so that's going to be on Tuesday night, um, at half past 12 in the morning, your time. But okay. it might be worth staying up for. Um, are, are these being recorded, even though they're we, live? Yeah, so it, we have um, this year, you, one must register to participate. Um, there's a separate cost for the blues blow off and those people who pay the $15, if you can't stay up, we will post the YouTube link. So we're going to email the links to the Zoom room and the YouTube link for each evening to the to our registrants um, so that you can watch it on YouTube. If you know, we have a number of folks who watched it, for example, in Asia last year. Um, and so and and obviously the seminars with a bit of luck, we'll have all of those on there, too. I, I keep my fingers crossed a little bit because I can only watch one at a time. But um, yeah. and so all of that content will be available to people who register. So if you miss a seminar because it's across from something else, you'll be able to you know go back and watch it later on. Um, but by the way, those seminars from last year for, for members are still there. Um, they're hidden, so they're only available to members. But the links are all on the uh, SPA website once you log in. How does how do people become a member of SPA should they so wish? Yeah, it is you go to spa.org and click join. It is a $50 uh, US dollar uh, per year cost. You get four copies of almost as good as yours magazine. <laughs> no, uh, we both I think challenge each other each year each each uh, issue and I'm a, a proud recipient of the UK magazine. Um, we do an eight and a half by 11, roughly speaking, um, which sort of equates to about a four for Brits. Um, and, uh, although not quite and, uh, full color, this issue coming out is going to be about 40 pages. And so you get four issues of that. And in fact, if you join now, you'll get a membership through the end of next year because we want people to join. And instead of paying $200 to be a registrant, you only pay a hundred bucks for the whole four day convention, which starts on Wednesday. Um, and so, and, and each year we always give you back your $50. If you remember, um, you get $50 off the registration for the live event. So, uh, and, and I should say this, all that money, the hundreds and the fifteens and all the registration money is going straight to the talent. Um, that's why we're doing this. Um, SPA is underwriting the production cost. Um, any tips that come in, we're going to split 50 50. Um, but we're ready, and all the sponsorship money that we receive this year is going into that bucket. Um, and so the artists, we were able to do a much larger commitment up front to the artists, which allowed us to, to raise the quality. Um, in many cases, they've been able to hire professional recording engineers and sound engineers to do some of the recordings. And some of them are just, I mean, they're all pretty much, I think, with maybe one exception done for us purposely, um, and you'll see them first on spot. So by doing it this way, we've been able to step up again our game in quality and, and allow people to do some really cool production. Uh, Jason Ricci's show is being recorded in one of the storage units where they keep all the um, Mardi Gras parade stuff. And so you'll see the backdrop is all the Mardi Gras bits and pieces all hanging around at the back behind him when he's playing in down in Louisiana. Um, Excellent. And I have tried really hard not to watch them because <laughs> I want to watch them first time <laughs> when I'm sitting in this chair in about two weeks. Yeah. And that's when is that starting? It's mid August, isn't it? It is August the 10th is the Blues Blow Off Tuesday. And then the convention is 11th through 14. So four afternoons and evenings and, and then one evening the night before Blues Blow Off um, where we will uh, have the the live blues show. Um, we're also going to have Andrew Ali and Josh Small, who's going to perform live in addition to the Billy Bob Arnold event. Um, and then Don Caesar, for those of you who haven't seen Don do his performance, um, uh, sort of a little, it, it, quite often a little Richard experience, I should say. Um, he's amazing and has more energy than anybody who showed it. Uh, and uh, so he's going to do his live as well. So this year will be the first time we've actually held live performances. We thought about doing it last year, and it was just too hard to get venues because of where we all were. This year, there are, people are able to you know, find venues where they can do a show. Um, That's excellent, because I think we're so, gonna, when, when we do the Harmonica UK one this year, I think we're going to 
try and it's it's booked to be entirely digital at the moment but i think they're going to try and add some live stuff in i think but not not confirmed i see a question well, from zoe yes yeah, it's not so much of a question as a shout out, Michael. I attended SPA last year for the first time, so it was virtual, and it was absolutely fantastic. All of you who are interested should go right to the site after and <laughs> get your membership and, and uh, hook up with SPA <laughs> because the convention is wonderful. I can't imagine it being better than last year, Michael. <laughs> Well, I, I, what we wanted to do is give people more choice and, and raise the bar in terms of overall quality um, and, I, and bring the kids back. I mean, just a lot of things, the blues blow off, um, having more seminars. So I think, yeah, it, it, better may be a, a dangerous word because I think people had a really good time last year. I mean, so much of this, and I think your event, Ben, is the same. Certainly the Kerrville Folk Festival, where I've been going for 25 years, people go because they want to see their friends. Right. That's why we go. And they want to give people a hug and they want to enjoy and share the music and, and sit around and, and be able to walk around the hallways of, of Spa and see the Sardo family playing and playing all day long in the hallway on a sofa somewhere in the lobby. Um, you know, and so we can't get to that. but. We're, we're trying to yeah, get it's a big social thing, isn't it? And they walk out saying, thank God, we'd only have to see them once a year. <laughs> <laughs> um, next, they only, year, a lot of these only meet. They only meet once a year, don't they? A lot of these people because they're all in different parts of the world. Yeah. In fact, the, you asked about when we were emailing back and forth, you asked about a recording and I sent you a, a potential one if you're interested to sort of include, because I think it's one of the best that I could find very quickly. Um, it's Chris Bauer and Rob Paparozzi playing together, and it's a, it's, it's a split screen. Um, and in the particular clip, they talk before they're playing about the fact that they have never played before together, except oh. at Spa. They've never done a show together before. And so last year in 2022, we recorded the two of them playing Day Tripper. <laughs> And so I thought, well, I'll, I'll send some of the, the British invasion back over to England with, a, with an American interpretation on two harmonicas, a diatonic and a chromatic, I think, although there might be two chromatics at some point, because Rob does both. Um, Do you have a video of that then you want to show us now? Well, I, I don't know if it's best for me to show it. I mean, I can try. You want just to see sharing, it? Yeah, just sharing the screen. How long is the video? Um, let me, so let's keep talking while I go find it and I'll tell you probably five minutes. Oh, that'll be fine. That'll be, yeah. that'll be great. So let me go over there and the screen. did anybody else go to the spa festival last year or has anybody been in person to it? Anybody in our group here? Well, especially if you live in North America, you should just hop on a plane. If you don't have a plane, ask Mary Beth's husband to drive you there. <laughs> got a plane hop on a plane and go to wherever it is <laughs> and go to it next year this time next year go to it or even from the uk you can go it's, it's fantastic virtually i was up forever i was up all the time for four days because we kept going at night too there was groups and people that were still on for most of the night i think i got two hours sleep a night <laughs> it's, it's probably it's probably as bad as that if not worse when you go in person yeah i would say you know i i you know, there are mornings when I have to get up and do a president's breakfast at eight in the morning and then we go to midnight and then I'm putting signs away at one in the morning and then we get up in the morning and finish packing up and then we have a meeting because we, you know, we only get to meet each other. You know, the distances being what they are here, we only get to meet about once every uh, once a year as a board yeah. <laughs> in yeah. person. So I'm going to hit play here just a second and get and it up on my. This is great. Rob is. You're going to. Uh, uh, shall I let you share the screen? Yes, if you I already please. did that. Oh, did you? So oh. He, yeah, he should be able to share the screen. All right. All right. Very good. So I'm going to get. Sorry. Just get rid of that. Sorry. All right, Phil. Just sing. All right. Um, yes. Uh, I'm just doing a, doing a show at the moment.
All right, here we go. It's got the organ player from Yankee Stadium, Ed Alstrom, is playing organ on their songs. So that'll that'll fill that it'll fill that hole in our soul that we're going to miss from baseball. We'll get to hear a little ballpark uh, inspired organ on this next uh, set. I also want to talk with you about on this performance. This is the first time Rob and Chris Bauer have played together live. They have made recordings together, but they've never played live together. Let me give you a little bit of Chris Bauer's bona fides. Um, he's been playing since he was nine years old. Hey, Chris. How you doing, Rob? <laughs> All right, man. It's great to be here uh, for Spa Week. This is probably the first spa that was ever done online. So this is a big deal uh, for Spa not to have a live convention. It is. It is. And we, we certainly uh, we miss being able to see everybody and, and um, you know, just, just hanging out in the hallways and just, just jamming with each other. It's like, we're not doing that. So we kind of miss that. Uh, I definitely miss the... Uh, uh, Meeting, you're seeing everybody, meeting some new faces. Um, you know, it's 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 tough, but it's understandable why we're why we're doing it. So, yeah, it's gonna be a whole different thing. But yep. I'm glad that you know that they felt that we had to have something because spa. I mean, I've been a member since the '70s, yep. and I, I know they were going way before that. And uh, this is something that we don't want to lose momentum on because. Everybody kind of, I know I do, I look forward, even if I can't make the convention, I look forward to hearing about who they're having and, yeah. and see if I could work it into my schedule to get out to one of yeah. these conventions. So it was supposed to have been in St. Louis this year. Yeah. I was really yeah. thinking of going, and yeah. uh, we're going to try and do this online. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's awesome that, that uh, you know, and what we're doing here, um, you know, you and I have never performed together we, we've done things together <laughs> but we've never performed yeah, we together. Jammed that spa that's about it that's yeah. pretty much it yeah 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 I, well, we, well we did the one track of my christmas cd that you uh, brought your your brain power to to produce <laughs> right we worked on that together but that was a recording and that was yeah. in a recording studio so yeah. here we are from your home and, and my home out here on the east coast you know yeah. Yeah. and uh we're trying to provide some stuff so i i'm, I'm happy that they kind of teamed us together to do yeah. this because yeah, we finally get a chance to work on a project. So. Yes, yes, yeah. And I, and I think, um, you know, folks that are watching this, are, are, we, we've, we've put together a, a pretty of, of the tunes we're going to do. Um, and I think it'll, um, I think everyone will be really uh, entertained by it, at least, at least I hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it was, uh, we, you know, we, we put our heads together and, you know, I figured, hey, I'll play some chromatic and some blues harp and Chris will do his great stuff that he does on the chromatic, and maybe even he'll pick up a blues harp. Who yeah. knows what's happening? I haven't, I haven't seen the video yet. But, uh, let's stop talking and kick this thing off with a little ticket to ride, man. There we go.
a honey dripper for you. Well, if that doesn't put a smile on your face, nothing will. Whoa, hang on. There you go. <clears throat> wow, that was fantastic. Yeah, what a great rendition, eh? Yeah. Um, I, uh, I'm i pleased to say what the Kerrville Folk Festival, which happens about an hour, you know, I'm, if you look at a map of Texas, I'm due west of Austin, due north of San Antonio. Kerrville is, Oh, about 60 miles southwest of here as the crow flies. And um, uh, Rob is coming down to teach this year at the, what is now an October festival because the May one was too scary, um, that we're doing in person with a bit of luck. And Rob and Todd Parrott are gonna come down and teach there for three days with about 20 people sitting around and we'll be jamming and at nights. And so uh, I can't wait. Rob, Rob's tone is special. Um, and Chris's uh, chromatic playing is fabulous. The production was just beautiful, I thought. You know, I don't know if anyone noticed, but uh, Rob held up some of his artifacts, and one of them was a harmonica. I have a, one in there. Uh, it's the Imagine issue that was done for John Lennon by Honer about 15 years ago, maybe. Yep. Um, done in white, of course. <laughs> yeah, with a, a um, clear, clear um, body, clear plastic. Yeah. Yeah, clear plastic comb um, in a box, and I think I've taken it out maybe twice and blown through it um, since I bought it. I've also got the Sunny Terry one in there that they did last year. So um, yeah, that's so that's that's what it's like, and I just love the creativity that it inspires. And and, and again, I will say again, our ability to keep helping our teachers, our performers, make a living doing what they do while clubs are getting their feet back on the ground and and um you know because you can't wear a mask while we play right and so you've got to pick your gigs very very carefully uh, i've been lucky enough to have a nice outdoor venue but it you know 
and being fully vaccinated and all that stuff. But it's still, you know, it, as we all know, it's still a, you know, we're walking a tightrope still a bit. Is there not a harmonica mask which has a harmonica inserted into the mask? I haven't seen one yet. It must be. Um, I don't know. It'd be awfully hard to blow through that. Um, I have one with harmonicas printed on the outside, but there isn't room for one on the inside. <laughs> just, but you're supposed to just cut it, cut it out on the dotted lines, Michael. Just... Oh, that's what it is. Okay. It's yeah. harmonica per mouth. There you go. You're good there you to go. go. But I thought that was particularly appropriate, given that at least some of the audience here are from England, and, and certainly you, that we would yeah. send back a pretty darn good version of of a song I grew up listening to in in a coffee shop somewhere in Cornwall, I think. <laughs> well, some of it. Jason's from Cornwall. Where, where was right. that? Where, where did you when you were in the UK? Where where were you? I was born in South London. Um, I can uh, tell by the accent. South and, London, yeah. Yeah, and 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 my mum didn't like primary school there, so we moved a bit south, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we went to Sussex, don't you know? Yes. And uh, I spent some time there, and then I went to Winchester. Yes. College for oh, about yeah. four four years of I mean beautiful town I I still love that place it's just a, an amazing bit of history it is everything around there um, and uh, but we went on holiday to Cornwall a lot um, Foy Saint Austell uh, Paul Ruin Paul Perro Morgan Porth um, even drove all the way to Lands End once much to my dad's chagrin because he hated tourist things but um, we had to do it. And uh, I've watched what looked like Lancaster's landing at the Morgan Airport back in the day. Um, yeah. They were Halifax refitted, you know, basically refitted Lancasters. <laughs> it was quite an experience for a young man growing up in the 50s. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, watching them fly into Morgan Airport. I don't even know if they use it anymore. But um, so uh, Colm was very, a very fun part of my uh, memory walking uh doing cornish miles up and down the hills had my first drink of of beer after a walk that i did in cornwall when i was about 14 and we got back to the to the morris oxford that we were driving my dad was driving and all he had to drink in the car was one of those big quart flagons of whitbreads with the old heavy stopper on it the screw yes. stopper on it and that was my first, that was like, well, that's what you got. That's what I'm going to drink. <laughs> the ideal end to a, to a walk. To a walk. Absolutely. Yes. And the smell of gorse coming off the bushes, <laughs> that lovely smell of coconut. that Gorse, they put gorse and beer. Um, going back to Rob, when, yeah. when Rob Paparossi was doing a performance here in, in Bristol in the UK a few years ago um, for, for the one of the festivals we had here, I was um, I was just standing by the stage, just sort of helping manage things. And I was, so I was looking back at the audience and I noticed that the whole of the audience were just beaming, just smiling, beaming, I think is the word. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever seen that before. And I, so yeah. I, I'm trying to figure it out and look back at the stage and Rob's beaming, as you saw from that video, yeah. he's just got one of those faces at, at repose. His face is just very smiley. And he was just working with the band. It was it's a pickup band. He'd never met them before. And he was really getting talking with them as he was playing and getting involved. And when he was singing, he was, you know, putting the word Bristol into the lyrics. <coughs> so he's really engaged the audience. So I think yeah. he, he's one of my favorite performers, as regardless of what he's doing. But as a yeah. performer, I think he's outstanding. Yeah, I do? agree. I completely agree, Ben. Um, we one of the founder stage events, we We've always had music in this sort of secondary. It's, it's usually, you know, not the ballroom when we do the evening shows. We had this uh, other room that for years was just whatever the name of the room was. And, and about five or six years ago, we got together and said, we need to call it something so we can refer to it each year and not worry about, you know, as to call it, well, the second stage. So we called it the Founders S apostrophe uh, stage because there are more than one. And, um, and, and we run music there from 3, 3.30 till 5 o'clock against the seminars and i think it was in st louis i don't remember if it was the last time in st louis we uh put rob up there and um he did a one-hour show that still has been unbeaten and for the for, for exactly the same reason because everybody's just smiling and it and he's you can tell 
you can tell people who play effortlessly, and he's certainly one of them. There are many people who do that, but you can tell he's having so much fun doing it. And you just want, you know, you just get, you know, as I say, everybody, I was looking at the faces, you know, these little pictures I got here, and I was looking, everybody was just beaming. I think it was just, you know, particularly Zoe. <laughs> it is extraordinary. Some people have just got that, got that knack. It is. Yeah. So I'm so... Uh, I'm going to get spent, hang out with Rob for three days coming up here. Um, um, does anybody, I'm wondering if anybody has any questions. Yeah, please. Ask. Is there any questions about SPA, about what we're doing, about the harmonica? I don't know if I'm the best one to answer that, but. Well, or, or anything about, I mean, I don't even know when SPA started. It was, uh, it was probably in the fifties, was it or something? Or? It was 1963. Okay. And um, in the last two or three issues, I've had the opportunity to interview um, one gentleman whose father was intimately involved in starting um, SPA, and then another one who was a president um, and was involved very early on. And so I've, ha I've had two kind of bird's eye views of what SPA was like in the 60s. It was started by a group of four motor company employees and um, they were allowed to use the, the Ford facilities in Michigan to do that. And so for many, many years, the convention was in Romulus, Michigan, because that's where they all lived. And um, it was all very much around chromatic and trio performances. So, you know, it was, it was the traditional, you know, uh, chromatic chord, possibly some tremolo, and uh and bass. and bass which i guess and was that was prompt that was the most that was sort of the the pinnacle of harmonica bands was the 50s and i guess the 50s really but 60s well even and even before that but 40s 50s the harmonicats the rascals all those guys i mean i i also had the had the pleasure of interviewing tony scrow and discovered that he played sunday night at the london palladium for the brits uh, listening in um, with people like Eric Sykes and Hattie Jakes and and uh, uh, Harry Worth, if you remember his thing, I'm, I'm old enough to remember how you know when you do his one arm and one leg, and it looked like he was doing the splits in the window. Um, Tommy Cooper, all these people that Tony grew up with, that I you know, you know, like maybe many others who grew up in the early '60s, watching them in black and white, and he used to play that Sunday show that was on BBC as it was television there wasn't anything I, but BBC. i guess that was that was a legacy of um music halls and vaudeville wasn't it really yeah i think so very much so and and um you know there were some that might look back <laughs> of those kind that you might look back on now and go that was a little bit you know off um because of some of the things that we did in some of those events but the the palladium one was very much the variety show, right? It was it was a live variety show, and it was a really fun experience. And so those guys, you know, used to hang out with all these. You know, they came over, so they were playing in London the whole time. You know, when when you know, and, and so Spa started around that, and it was not until really the I think it's about the nineteen eighties. I have to look it up. That a certain gentleman called Peter Madcat Ruth mm -hmm. um, showed up with a diatonic and blew their minds and said, look what I can do. <laughs> right. um, and for those who don't know Peter uh, Madcat, as he goes by, I've known, I'm, I call him a very good friend and we've been friends for 20 years now. And he played um, uh, with Dave Brubeck. He went to school with Chris Brubeck and has inspired me actually to try and play Take Five about a tenth as good as, as well as he does. In fact, just I think just before this recording on the day on night number three um there is one certainly in one of these series and i think it's the one right before this where he is actually playing take five and anyway he was the first diatonic player to be really recognized by spa and what we do now is try to blend it all together and so when you look even at this event this year we've got we've got a midi uh, we've got john shirley who's going to play a midi harmonica we've got a number of both male and female chromatic players we've got a virtual harmonica band doing you know the, the american songbook sort of traditional stuff with probably i forget four or five chromatics you know playing different parts and bass chord um we've got uh you know blues uh, 
and everything in between, and and so and and one other trio as well. So. We try to create a blend of, of diatonic and chromatic. And actually, when you look at the youth show, you'll see particularly the Indians are playing ragas on, on chromatic. Um, and with the, with the price now of, uh, of some of the Chinese models of chromatics under $100, you know, a, a decent playable chromatic for 60 US dollars. If you want to teach chromatic music, what better way to do it than with something you can put in your pocket and carry on the bus and, and instead of a big old lugging piano that somebody's got to find room for in their house <laughs> um, and all the cost associated with it. And so uh, I've actually had some teachers come up to me when I've done things with kids. We do one, one event, a couple events a year when, it's, when we're able to do it in person. Uh, one, I gave away about 400 diatonic harmonicas, but I brought out the chromatic and I was talking to one of the teachers and she was really intrigued about the possibility of being able to do a, teach chromatic instruments because you can't have you know, 12 to 15 pianos all sitting there so people can play it. So if you've got a group session, what can you do? And you can do it, you, know, you can teach people how to play chromatic music. On, on, uh, on a chromatic harmonica and then adapt that to a piano or an accordion or you know any other keyed instrument because it's as Stevie Wonder has proven so admirably um, <laughs> it's it, there's a lot in common in that skill set um, have you ever managed to get him to a convention Stevie no, Wonder unfortunately not and quite honestly we would have to bring the convention to him <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think we would have the size, the capacity, the security, or anything else to manage Stevie Wonder appearing at Spa. Um, but we do get uh, Charlie McCoy, who people who don't know has played with just about everybody in Nashville over the years, including the Beatles. Uh, Buddy Green, who is notable for his performance of um, uh, William Tell Overture uh, at Carnegie Hall. Um, solo, <laughs> um, which not only is amazing, but talk about guts. Get up there and play that thing in front of that audience. Um, um, and uh, Paul Gillings from the UK will be playing. Cy Leo is a fabulous player. So we've got, um, you know, we've got some of the best, some of the best this year. And I'm, I'm really pleased that we've been able to pull it off. And hopefully, a lot of these folks were going to play live last year, couldn't push, said, no, we'll, we'll come back when we can do it live next year, like Mark Hummel, and then said, OK, I guess we're going to have to do it. So yeah. um, but and the, one of the other nice things about it is, for example, we're able to have Christelle Baton as well as uh, Rachel Pla, who mm -hmm. uh, you are know, both international performers. Uh, we've had one, unfortunately, that just can't get together with uh, actually two, one in Germany and one in Brazil that just can't meet with the people to be able to do a recording even. But the ability to do this in video allows us to bring in, you know, like last year um, with Antonio, um, so uh, Serrano, you know, the, where, you know, yes, we could have brought him over by plane. And in fact, we still will. But it it's so much harder to do that with the international travel and the visas and the money and the, you know, it's just complicated as heck. Um, to do the international thing. I wonder whether this this fact that we've been forced into using Zoom for so much will have a continual legacy as we go into being able to put on live events. I think there'll still be Zoom things we can bring in guests from all over the world without any cost. Makes sense to me. Yeah, I and, and we are planning on having a large screen on the founder stage next year Great. not on the main stage because i think it's too big and and, and the, well, i'm not sure about the audio quality um but well, you might want to you might want to engage some of my students here they might like to come and play for you yeah uh, i mean I, I think what we'd like to do is be able to broadcast on the founder stage again because it's you know three in the afternoon it's still nine o'clock ten o'clock at night in europe um, so we could still have European performers who might otherwise not be able to, to be with us for one reason or another, who could come on and, and play on that stage, um, be live um, and have a live audience and give them the feedback. And then we're also going to have cameras in, every, in all the four seminar rooms and in the main stage so that we can broadcast out to people who still aren't able to fly and, and join us for one reason or another. 
Um, so, so Ken, you better get your performance ready for Spa next year. <laughs> Is that yeah, maybe we'll do, a jam, we'll do a jam after the show closes, right? Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. You know. Well, he's yeah. only down the road. He's only in Canada. So that's. Oh, okay. Crazy. Well, there you go. All right. All right. Questions for Michael. He's done enough yeah. talking now. We're going to stay here till we sort this out. <laughs> <laughs> Come along. Questions, please, ladies and gentlemen. You we must have silence. Yeah, I know. We've uh, we'll answered them all. Um, is it going to be available on YouTube at all afterwards if you can't um, afford to do the. Um, we. I don't want to pre announce anything, but we we have to respect. The, the, so let, let me sort of back up because there's a. There's a I, I realize that the adding a, a registration fee you know made it harder for some people to join us the reason we did that was we wanted to be able to be sure we could increase the amount of money that we were paying to our performers and give them something of a, a closer to what they would expect to do for the kind of work they're having to put in to to give us the performances and last year we didn't know what we were going to get and then we had a wonderful outpouring of of tipping that was ha everything we did and so we were after the fact able to to provide some some wonderful uh, much needed help to everybody because we passed that all the way through this year we said we're going to put a small charge on there and but i realize it's it's too high for some uh, let me just answer your question this way most of the youtube and the other information um and certainly the seminars will only be available to registration to registrants Part of the reason for seminars that way is because these teachers make their money teaching, and if you, you know, if we put too much of their free content on the internet, then their ability to continue to teach because their lessons are now uh, available on the internet is is a little harder. We do when we get together in person. We always have one evening where we invite the local general public to join us. Um, so. Uh, what just let's say stay tuned for an announcement for one evening that might be available to anybody who wants to watch it. Otherwise, you've got to find a friend who registered <laughs> and have them help you watch it on YouTube. Maybe I should say it that way. Um, or do you, or do you have, um, you know, vacancies for people to pay their way and do some work for you? Uh, we for a free ticket. We 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 had we did have a shout out for as I think you know Ben. Um, uh, uh, we did a shout out for folks who we were looking for people to do host and co-host. We have a host and co-host for every seminar, so that's you know basically three you know three times two is six people that are working during the afternoons and then the evenings. Um, we're going to have the same group of MCs we did last year. Um, and we have, I think, have a full complement. But if, so, if somebody is interested in being a host, I'll put my email address in the chat. And if we have a, somebody fall out, um, it, it's pretty close now because we've already done our training. Um, but if we run into a, a problem and somebody's interested in, um, in doing that, drop me an email. And if, if something opens up, I will pass it along. That's the main way that we've been able to let some other folks in, in addition, obviously, to doing all the work that, that folks are doing to help us out. Um, in, in, you know, in the typical year, we, we get a number of volunteers who come in from the local town, from the local harmonica club or blues club, and help us. And you know, we just sort of do a work trade. If you work for half a day, we can, like if you work during the seminars to check badges or sell t-shirts or whatever, then you could stay the rest of the day and watch the show. Um, and we're doing something like that this year, but obviously the number of opportunities to do it is a bit limited. But the opportunity to host seminars in the afternoon is 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 one that we so we did throw out earlier. I'm pretty sure we're full up there. But if somebody's inter particularly interested in helping us do that, drop me an email. And if we have some uh, uh, a problem there where we need an extra pair of hands, um, I'll pass your name along. Or we or we find a friend. <laughs> yeah, and I say it will be on YouTube for registrants. 
Um, and that registration, by the way, if you've got two people in your house, we're not expecting, I mean, we'd love for both of you to register um, because if you were in person, that's what you do. But if, if that's not, you know, not possible, um, you're, uh, you're certainly welcome to sit and watch the same show together. <laughs> so it's per household, if you will. Um, and the good news is we've had really strong support um, and strong response, both from our vendors. I should, can I give a shout out to the to the sponsors, um, I yeah, would be bereft of my duty if I didn't. Um, so we have annual sponsorships. Last year, we kind of postponed the sponsorship because we nobody quite knew what was going to happen. This year, we've reinstituted our gold and silver um, and added a new level of platinum sponsorship. And so Honer is our platinum sponsor, which means they donate a significant sum of money and they also bring in in, in, in person years equipment um, as well as um, help us procure talent. And so this year um, we have one of their performers, Rochelle Pla is being sponsored by Honor and we're working on number two. They, one of theirs was one of the ones that we had to uh, replace because they couldn't get together to uh, in Brazil to rehearse. But, um, and then Eastop is a gold sponsor. And then Seidel, Goldenbird, uh, Suzuki Lone Wolf Blues Company blows me away. Productions, both equipment manufacturers and Kongsheng, another uh, Chinese manufacturer, are all silver sponsors. And then, in addition to that, this year we had seven vendors who basically donated, uh, bought tickets, and then donated some extra money so that we had a little more money in the tip jar for our uh, or in, in the paychecks for our performers. And that includes Phil Harmonica's, the, those beautiful chromatics that Phil Sardo um, and his family put together, George Miklas Harmonica Gallery, and many people know George as a really fine player of pretty much everything. Uh, Anctomatics uh, Turbo, the, Nedra Russ, the harmonica lady who does a, a lot of wonderful jewelry, including little ladies on wearable things. Uh, Dynamite Tuning Tables, a new harmonica, which is Danny G for those that have been to us and, and Daybell, um, who is a, a, a manufacturer out of Korea. So uh, we really appreciate because they all stepped up in March and allowed us to go, OK, we've got what we need to do the kind of, you know, the paycheck that we wanted to do this year. Um, we're lucky as an organization, having been around for 58 years, this will be our 58th convention to to have money in the bank. There's a lot of nonprofits who struggled um, we've we've been I think pretty good stewards of the of the finances that we've been uh, provided by our members and and by our sponsors and so we're able to use the income from that in some respects to underwrite like I say the production we're using a professional production company uh, for the same people who did it last year um, so the afternoons are all on Zoom and the evening we actually go into a television studio virtually. Um, we're actually about 10 seconds ahead of you watching and we have producers in our ears um, so it's sort of a TV experience in the evening and we use a, a wow. tool called Wirecast that is then broadcast out to Zoom and to YouTube um, and allows us to do more things you know put up <laughs> for those who watched last year uh, excuse me we have a, a slight problem you know one moment one moment please um, uh, while we sorted out some some problems that with you know last year the technology was still really really you know we, we were pushing some limits on a lot of it and at one point people could start hearing us talking while people were playing <laughs> Zoe remembers that one and so we like had to stop and like okay and then we had to re, you know we figured out why that well it was wire it was a bug in wirecast somewhere that, that, that they've since fixed thankfully but um so we have a wonderful production team they will be with us in person next year. Um, Equalize sound, Equalize productions. So I, I think it's going to be a fabulous time, um, an opportunity to learn. Come with your questions. You know, um, the lounge will be open for people to meet with performers and amongst themselves after hours at, in, in during the breaks. We have wonderful break videos from some from the 70s and, and 80s, 90s that we put on every 15, you know, 15 minute breaks in between each show. So you can watch some old spa shows. Um, and uh, some of it's audio only over slides and some of it um, is is video. That, so we've got some archival stuff that we're able to play. If you go look at the, our YouTube site is, is labeled Spa Harmonica. 
And if you didn't watch it last year, go to just search on Spa Harmonica, S-P-A-H space Harmonica. You'll have all of last year's four evening shows and one seminar, which is tuning up your tin sandwich, which was a really good um, uh, seminar that Jim uh, and Kelly have allowed us to leave up there about how to take apart and, and tune your diatonic harmonica. So all those are up there together with a whole bunch of other um, cool stuff from years past. Um, so um, that is all free <laughs> and paid for by SPA members. So um, we hope that all of you will be able to join us. Keep an eye out on Facebook for any announcements, maybe the early August, you know, a, a few days before we start about possibly some free slots that you might be able to join us. Um, either during or after the fact. And if you decide to become a member afterwards, you'll also find all the seminars from last year are all there already. Uh, in addition to, um, and by the way, we do send the magazine to England, um, as I think Ben knows. Um, yeah. And sometimes you get it before I do, even though I only live about 200 miles away from where it leaves. <laughs> that was true. Uh, we have a rather special person running the post office here <clears throat> right now. <clears throat> um, not to mention politics, but um, who used to be in the private shipping business and decided he was going to charge more and slow everything down. Um, <laughs> and so all of a sudden things were going overseas about twice the speed as they were here, but that seems to be getting better again. I can't think why. Well, it's quite a show you've got lining up. Does anybody want to talk to Michael about anything before he goes? It's pretty amazing. Richard. Uh, Richard, Richard, yeah. Yeah, um, hi, Michael. I'm just wondering if you can just go over your, your costs again for the um, for your membership and for the and for the convention as well. Yes, sir. Um, so membership is fifty dollars um, yeah, a year, and if you join now, that'll give you membership through the end of next year. So you actually get a couple of extra issues out of that. Yeah. And if you come next year, that'll also give you your fifty your fifty bucks back. It will be a discount off next year. And if you join, then you can enjoy the four nights of the convention, which is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday for $100. If you don't join, it'll cost you 200 Most people do their sums and figure out it's cheaper to join, but some people just aren't joiners, you know? So, um, and then the blues blow off is just 15 bucks for Tuesday night. And if you, if there's one thing, you know, if you want to, you know, it, Come join us for that. For 15 bucks, right. you're going to get this wonderful live show. Um, I mean, just watching June Core play drums is worth it. Uh, I, I got to watch him up close and personal with Charlie Musselwhite two years ago, and he's just a sweet guy and, and a fabulous drummer, one of the best in, in Silicon Valley. And that will be a live show. Aki Kumar, Mark Hummel, Nick Clark, Gary Smith, Andy Santana, and, and the backing band um, playing somewhere in San Jose, California. Um, on the on the Tuesday night, and so that's a separate ticket for fifteen. Stuff, yeah. So, um, and that gives you all the recorded stuff as well, right? Yeah. Um, and, and all the seminars during the afternoons. Um, so, I know it. I know it's it's a lot of money for people on fixed incomes and and in other situations. Um, I sort of look at it this way. Our job is to put is to help our community. You know, it's pre preservation and advancement. And you know, we're paying our kids to perform. Um, we're paying all of these performers and seminar presenters to do what they do. Um, we're paying the production company to do sound at a time when live sound is still you know limited. Uh, and a company we know that can you know, so we're helping them stay alive what, until we can use them in in person. And um, that's what that's what yeah. that hundred dollars allows. Well, I'm us just to looking at, at all the gigs that I haven't been able to go to. The most, <laughs> I've yeah. got that money just sit, sitting there. That I, well, yeah, uh, but absolutely. Something, yeah, yeah. I I would say, and if you know, some people last year, God bless them, came and said, and, and you know, last year it was free because we really had no idea what was going to happen, and yeah. so we just said, well, let's just throw it open and we'll we'll gamble with some money and then we'll give all the rest of it at the end, whatever we get. You know, we just spread it, we just factored it, you know, divide by the total, and boom, off we go. And we, we paid 165% tip last year. <laughs> and so we, we basically took half what we got on average from everybody, which was a little over $200, and said, let's just charge half of that. <laughs> 
some people donated what they would have spent for hotels because they were going to spend four days in a hotel and you and and you get to eat your own food you don't have to leave the house there's no <laughs> petrol involved you know um so i'm showing my british colors here but you know <laughs> leave the car that's in the look at it mike you know? that's look at it yeah. <laughs> um i mean the one thing of the pandemic i think we've all got a few bob left no pocket because what have we been spending it on you can't get yeah. out you can't, you can't spend on it so yeah. And I got a, I got a few Bob sitting sitting in my uh, in my collection over there. Uh, I got a few a few sixpences and a couple of half crowns too. We just we just lost. <laughs> oh, what happened there? What happened there? A little I'm collection. Gone. Yeah, you were so uh, so much okay. funny. We lost him. Yeah. I'm back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Oh, there he is. No, oh, I can hear it. He's still there. Where's it um, gone? Where, so where do you live? I live in the, the northeast of England in Sunderland. Yeah, I was going to say it looked, it sounded a bit like uh, from up there. That's it, I'm back. Um, one of, Something one of, took me off. One of the um, folks that I, when my wife and I got, we got married in Scotland because I wanted to get married in the, at least in the correct island, even if, <laughs> even if England wouldn't have me. I to hands of you didn't go to Gretna Green, did you? <laughs> no, no, we went to, we went to Edinburgh. Yeah, good man. Um, because it was a better airport than Gretna Green, but yeah, they, they, <laughs> it, my mother actually came up on the uh, and flew up and joined us because that was part of the issue was we, flying her over here in her late seventies wasn't going to happen. And um, we uh, on the way home, it, it so happened that the QE two was leaving Southampton right after we got married, and so we we said, well, what a better way to go home? And I'm so glad we did it, having watched that boat leave Southampton Harbor twice right yeah. after once after the first time and then this in the refit when they left yeah. because it was made up not far from you on on the west coast right, That's right yeah um, and um I just watched a beautiful special about the, the old how they made it and, and and obviously it's trip to the Falklands and all that and on there was this guy it was about British comedy and he was one of the he was one of the writers and he was from Newcastle oh. And he talked about, he said, you know, nobody funny ever came from the South. Because <laughs> <laughs> all those, Tommy Cooper, I mean, all, the, uh, all those folks, with the, with the possible exception of John Cleese and, and uh, you know, the Cambridge crowd, um, okay. you know, all the really funny people in England always, always came from the North. And, and, um, and uh, so anyway, it was my That's favorite. The, the, Northern, like, the Northern clubs are where everybody used to put their teeth, really. So, yeah. 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 Michael, do you remember the Morecambe and Wise show? They, at the end of the Morecambe and Wise show, they always had a guy with a harmonica. Yeah. Would come on. Yeah. And they would grab him by the neck. Yeah, and then, what was off. the catchphrase? Can anybody remember? Oh, gosh. Anybody remember? What was the catchphrase? We'll get to your question oh, in a sec, Carl. What was oh. the guy's name? Anyone remember? I remember. No. His name was Arthur Tulcher. So what was oh, the phrase? Yeah. Oh, God. Not now, Arthur. Oh. He'd start yeah. playing and he'd go, not now, Arthur. Not no, now. No. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, right. so that yeah, was yeah. Good. That was a good question, Ben. I'm sorry. I, yeah. I've had too much fun since then. <laughs> that was, um, I guess that was sort of the, part of the legacy of the old vaudeville as, as Laura, um, not Lauren Hardy, the other guys. Morecambe and Wise were, so that yep. Arthur Tulcher was a vaudeville. Yeah. Anyway, let's get on. Um, for la for last question, I think. Kahu. Do you have a, do uh, a question? Hi, Michael. Yeah. Hey. Um, you, mentioned earlier, um, you mentioned earlier about an October festival in Texas. And uh, is that happening yes. this year? Or has it happened already? It is happening this year. Um, it is called the Kerrville Folk Festival. It is in Kerrville, Texas. So you can, you, from San Antonio, it's about an hour. Um, and, you know, you can usually find a ride if you get on Facebook and poke around. Um, so you don't have to rent a car or whatever. It's a, it's a residential sort of camping festival, but there are also reasonable hotels in town. Um, uh, go to KerrvilleFolkFestival.org. I was, uh, I met my wife, Brenda Freed, there tw uh, 22 years ago. We got married 21 years ago. August 5th. So our anniversary is always right before Spa, <laughs> uh, which makes for an interesting anniversary. It's like, I, I'm thinking all about you, dear. Yes. <laughs> um, but um, 
we it is a 10 usually tw- an 18 day festival this year it'll be a thursday night through the following monday of a columbus day weekend or indigenous people's day as we now prefer to call it um and so it's the second weekend of no it starts on the first of october i think and goes through about the 12th something like that it is a fabulous experience it is like spa for folk musicians of all shapes and sizes um blues jazz rock and roll folk people playing in the campgrounds um you find yourself playing with made stage artists at two in the morning it's just a really really fun time um to uh and and you get wonderful music every night so it goes you know main stage goes from like seven to midnight there are sessions during the afternoon we have a a harmonica workshop which is you can do that that's during the week uh, with rob paparazzi todd parrott rob roy parnell who has been the director of the event for many many years a wonderful blues player um uh, who grew up with bob wills for those who know um, anything about Texas swing. Bob Wills was called Uncle Bob to Rob Roy um, and his brother Leroy, who's a guitar player and, and somewhat uh, equally famous. And uh, and then when they're off doing one-on-ones, which everybody gets a one-on-one with all three of those folks, I teach the the associated, the, you know, the assembled remainder. Um, and I usually do wacky things like, okay, let's play something in fifth position on a chromatic. <laughs> Um, and do, I actually picked up the wrong heart, but. Um, that was made famous for those of you who grew up in England um, by Jethro Tull, uh, but it was a song uh, written by Roland Kirk, a jazz player. Um, and uh, Ian Anderson picked it up, stood up on one leg, and started playing it. Um, and it's called uh, Serenade to a Cuckoo. And it lays out beautifully in fifth position. And so I took the whole group, who'd never, including chromatic players, and I did it in, on a C harp. And I did the tablature on both. And we had, and in fact, I was very pleased the following year in Spa, I'm standing in the lobby and we have a stage up there. And Mike Schmidt, who was one of the folks who'd been there the year before, all of a sudden I turn around, there he is playing it on the microphone. And I'm like, <laughs> that's the best thing a teacher can. And I'm not a professional teacher, but I'm like, what am I going to teach these people that, you know, that they're not going to learn from Rob Pepperozzi, Todd Parrott, and Rob Roy Parnell? <laughs> or so, Ben Hewlett. Oh, that's right. Yes, I'll be there. Yeah, I'll be there. I'll be teaching something. Yeah, you're going to be teaching at Spa, Thank right? You, yes, right. absolutely. Yeah, I was talking about Kerrville. Sorry, yes. Um, but um, so come if you can. It's a really fun experience. It has been going on for I think this is their 49th year. So they're about 10 years behind us at Spa in terms of age. It is the longest running continuously running festival of its kind in I think in the world, certainly in North America. Newport actually stopped for a little while, the folk festival. There were a few years it didn't happen. Um, and uh, so Kerrville, and it, it is very much like Spa. I, I was honored to be on the board and invited to be on the board and was chairman of that and then uh, met all my friends from Spa and they said, would you please come up and spend some time and help us too? And so I've now 20 years I've been doing between. You're a busy man. Yeah, 20, what, 21 years of doing nonprofits now. Start off with the Austin Hoot organization, the Austin, Texas Hoot, which is still around yeah. and is a nonprofit and then helped Kerrville out for a number of years and now Spa. And I haven't heard the results of the election this year. Jerry and I threw our hat in the ring for one more round of three years. Right. Um, and I, did, I saw one ballot come in for somebody else. I'm like, yeah, come on, go, go, go. <laughs> Uh, but we're honored to keep doing it. We have fun doing it. And I, I didn't want, I, I certainly didn't want, um, after we uh, had two years of doing it virtually, I would much rather end our tenure in person. Um, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, you know, I, it's a bit tongue in cheek when I say, I hope somebody else got, got elected, but. Um, Let's see what happens. There was nobody else on the ballot, so. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think we'll we'll call it there. That's I'm exhausted by all of that 
action that's going to happen. And let's, yeah. let's, um, let's go to the event and see how it pans out. It should be very exciting. And go watch last year's shows. I mean, the, you know, I just gave you a sample of it. it you know, yeah. it, just put that stuff on. You know, you can play it on your television, you know, at home. And, and yeah. just some of the best harmonica music, um, cool. you know, four nights of it. So that's what, like 20 hours or something, 13, 16 hours of music. Um, stuff. including all this this cool old stuff that we put in for the you know like hearing Mad Cat and Kane doing take five that is an experience yeah uh, has anyone has anyone in this group ever tried to play take five yes I, I call it up close and personal with the three hole yeah because you, you have basically half step up and down up and down between two and three and occasionally the four hole to do that da 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 and it it is talk about learning how to nail those bends on the first hit is uh and also we don't often play in five time well the five four yeah it's funny one other thing about that i it it feels like you know how six eight you feel it in two yes Two, three, four, five, six. It's you know, it, as opposed to a, you know, one, two. Sort of the what the three, four time is always you feel it in three. Six foot, six eight. The, what I've learned from musicians like my wife is that six eight you feel in two. I actually feel that in in two. Yes. Walking along if you've got a limp or something. <laughs> but it's it's easier than eleven eight. Um. That's that's you know that's got a double you know it's not it's not you know. <laughs> yeah we have to go and look in Bulgarian music and all that kind of stuff. yeah Grateful Dead people like that do uh, eleven eight yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Um, so take five is it, it, go search that out is it is one of the ones in there by the way all the videos have times on them so you can click the link and it'll take you right to like the one I showed on 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 the third night. Um, you can just click the time and it'll take you right to the beginning of it. Um, but don't miss those little vignettes in the middle because there's some really fun stuff. Ben, thank you so much for having me. Well, it's been a joy. Thank you for coming. And, uh, good to see everybody thank again. You. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Zoe and Mary Beth and Co. And, and hopefully we'll see some of you on the video. You'll, yes. you'll recognize this. <laughs> this. Long <laughs> sleeves. We're all going to be in air conditioning, so we went with long sleeves this year. <laughs> yes, good idea. Good idea. That's a nice shirt. Okay, yeah, I think we'll awesome. we'll say thank you and good afternoon and good evening and whatever. Good evening. Is. Good evening. You guys have a wonderful night. All right. Thanks, we'll Ben. See you soon. Thank Thanks, you. Mike. Bye. See you later. Bye all. See you later.